who is playing at Purdue this year, a Division I player, and Mike Storr, the fine field goal kicker. So those are some substantial losses. And you figure coming into the year that the Trojans would be in a rebuilding mode. And so far, they are off to the good start at 2-0. It seems like they normally play seniors, and that's why they have rebuilding years every year. But their kids on the junior varsity level are always excellent also. North Brunswick, the same thing, coming off a 6-2-1 record last year they scored 213 points well 146 of those points were scored by Eric Cunningham the running back their kicker and split end Craig Rubenstein and their fullback Darrell Banks so they lost a lot also but they have done a great job so far in their first game this year all right the Trojans take the field and the Raiders are right behind them and uh, they'll run over to the far side of the field under head coach Joe Policastro and the Bishop R Band is on the field. Uh, they're preparing to play our national anthem. the officials for tonight's game. The referee is Steve Matarante out of Dartmouth. The umpire Tom Nolan out of Yale. The linesman is Rick Matarante out of Princeton. And the line judge, Rick Travaglini out of Brown. So the Ivy League well represented in tonight's officiating crew. And uh, out of uh, Montclair State College up here with us in the booth. The, the uh, clock operator is Ozzie Curry and Jack Makos is keeping, uh, doing the scoreboard here tonight for the Bishop R. North Brunswick game. Big game for both clubs. We mentioned it's early, Jeff, but as you as you take a look at the way the season progresses, uh, certainly these are two teams, if you had to pick two clubs before the season started, that you would think would battle for the White Division Championship. I would agree with you, Lou. So far, there's four teams in this division that haven't lost yet. Bishop Bar is 2-0, as is Colonia. And John F. Kennedy and North Brunswick, they're both 1-0. But I agree with you, just like last year, to me, these two teams look like they're, on paper, the best two teams in this White Division. Certainly, Colonia and JFK out of Islin are off to good starts as well in the White Division. But this is a key contest for both clubs. Last year, as Jeff mentioned, these two teams played to a 10-10 tie. Good defensive game, which is pretty much the norm between these two teams. And I think that's pretty much what you'll see here tonight. Good defense, some hard-hitting football, and also uh, two teams with the ability, though, to make some big plays, and especially North Brunswick, Jeff, something that they haven't had the last few years. I think they really have the ability to be explosive at times, and that adds a new and very important dimension to their team. North Brunswick has huge tackles, which theoretically could open up some nice holes for the running backs, and with any chance at all, Doc I.I. will go through there. Last week he had 161 yards on 11 carries. He had two touchdowns, one on a kickoff return and one on a reception, so you have to look for his speed. All right, the captains for North Brunswick from left to right. Number 91 is Charles Louisa. 22 is Ishmael Dakayai, and Matt Hagee is number 13. For Bishop R, 44 is Mike Lang. Number 75, Joe Ghazi, one of the big linemen for the Trojans. Seven is the quarterback, Brian Keegan, and Chris Riley, number 20, out there for the Trojans. Huh? And we'll see who gets the football first. Nobody can keep here with. 
It is a beautiful night for football. Temperature in the 50s and not a cloud in the sky, just a gorgeous night, early October. We're hoping for this kind of weather in late November, right, Jeff? That would be nice. Last year in the playoffs, <laughs> we did that keyport Donnellan game, and it must have been five degrees. But you're right, this is perfect weather. You don't want it to be too warm, and you obviously don't want it to be uh, too cold also. But tonight, a gorgeous night. Very interesting. North Brunswick won the toss, and the Raiders have not elected to receive. They have declined receiving the football, so Bishop R will get the ball. North Brunswick chooses to go on defense first. Interesting. So Joe Palacastro Jr. is going to let his defense do the talking early for North Brunswick. Sometimes you have the jitters in the beginning of the game, and it's better to be on defense, plus you can get the ball to start the second half. So to me, that makes a lot of sense. So the Raiders will kick it off from right to left on your screen. Bishop R in the home red jerseys with white numerals and letters, white pants, the white helmets, and North Brunswick in their road white jerseys, the gold pants, and of course the blue numbers, blue helmets. Back deep for Bishop R, Doug Redondo, a junior 5'7", 165 pounds. And also back for the Trojans, number 22 is Mike Presley. He too a junior, 5'8", 160. Both players with good speed. Kind of a slow start to tonight's game, trying a lot of time to get this thing going. Now we finally have the football teed up. Pat Wad Agnino is the kicker for North Brunswick. And we are ready to go. Should be a good one. Hope you enjoy the game. North Brunswick and Bishop Barr, two rivals in the white division with a lot on the line. Perhaps a division championship if you can project it throughout the season. Here we go. Guadagnino kicks it high, but very, very short. And it's received. Player stepped out of bounds and then took a shot after the whistle, but no flag. And here's the Bishop R offense. It is a huge offensive line. The center is Joe Gazi. Jim Shields and Hans Mansell are the guards. John Kuttner and David Lala are the tackles. And Mike Lang starts at tight end. Jason Rutten is the wide receiver. Mike Presley, Chris Riley, Doug Redondo behind quarterback Brian Keegan. Senior, 5'9", 170 pounds. An exceptional runner, started junior varsity last year. And in the words of Tony Ashitino, they haven't had a quarterback with this kind of speed here at Bishop Bar, so look for them to utilize it. And he tries to roll out. Now he's in trouble. He moves out to the left side. He's still in trouble, and he'll go down for a huge loss. The Raiders deck him at the 15-yard line, and a big defensive play early for North Brunswick. Here's the Raider defense, and a strong defense. Jonathan Rich starts at defensive end. The tackles, Greg D'Agostino, Paul LaPasta, and Joe Haig. The linebackers are Charles Louisa, we'll talk about him in depth, Mike Krupkin and Ray Hansen. The corners are Henwood and Seelheimer, and Hagee and Mike Miller are the safeties. It is second down and about 17, and Keegan gives off tackle. Redondo has some room, and he gets back to about the 24-yard line. Had a hole on the right side of the Bishop R line, but it will be third down. And about 11 coming up for the Trojans. Looks like you had the uh, play called on first down, Lou, with Keegan rolling out to the right, as you mentioned. Know where to go, and he got that big loss. Now Redondo, with a decent run of seven yards, brings him back to the original line of scrimmage. A passing situation here on third down. 
third and 11. Keegan back to throw. Now he rolls out right side. He throws, has a receiver wide open. And Presley in and out of the hands at the 40-yard line of North Brunswick. The ball Presley should have just caught and probably taken for the touchdown. A beautiful pass there by Keegan as he rolled to the right. It looked like he was going to just go straight run because he was close to the line of scrimmage. Laid up a beautiful pass. Unfortunately for Presley, though, he dropped it. A little bit behind him. Presley heading for six points. Instead, Bishop Barr will kick. And Jason Rutten goes back to punt. Senior six foot, 205 pounds. It's a low snap. He does handle it, but it's a short kick. And the Raiders figure to get great field position here. They do at about the 47 yard line. So Joe Policastro's decision to go on defense first so far has paid off. Here's the North Brunswick offense, good sized offensive line. Callan is the center. D'Agostino and La Posta are the guards. Shane Carpentieri, senior 6'1", 260. Will Carbunis, a junior 6'1", 275. The wide receivers, Miller and Grady. Rich was the tight end, by the way. Kashim Grady, Rob Zoda, and Ishmael Dakayai behind quarterback Matt Hagee. Man in motion is Miller out of the eye. Here's the pitch to Dakayai, and he's got a nice hole across midfield and into Bishop R territory at the 49 yard line. The Bishop R defense, the defensive ends, Shields and Scala, the tackles, Todd Molinari, John Kutner, the nose guard. The linebackers, Lang, Rutten, and Aaron DeShield. The corners are Presley and Frank McKinney. Doug Redondo, the free safety, and Brett Lewinsky starts at strong safety. I formation, receivers split left and right. It's a second down and seven. Hagee now rolls out to the left side. Now he stops, plants, fires long. It is intercepted at the 13-yard line. Picked off by Aaron DeShield. And the Trojans get it back. Jeremy Seelheimer was the intended receiver, but he was double covered. And there's the uh, first turnover of this uh, football game. And we're going to see it again as we're going to see the rollout to the left by Hagee. Hagee rolled out, unleashed the ball for about 45 yards in the air. And unfortunately, we're not going to see that play again, but, but throwing into double coverage there, the interception was made by Bishop Barr. All right, Trojans get the ball back deep in their own territory at the 13-yard line. They have twin receivers split out to the right, and here's the give, a huge hole. And some good running room, and still struggling ahead for extra yardage is Redondo. So Doug Redondo, who has great quickness, according to the coaching staff at Bishop Barr, showed it there as he blasted through the hole and picked up a Trojan first down. Doug Redondo scored a touchdown last week in the 28-6 victory against Monroe. He has three touchdowns and a con two-point conversion this year for 20 points. Bishop Barr running out of the multiple eye formation. Again, same setup with twin receivers split to the right. And here's Keegan, and he gives another huge hole right up the middle and rambling for good yardage is the fullback, Chris Riley. He blasts through, and the Trojans running it up the gut here against North Brunswick. And this is, what, of course, what they want to do successfully in North Brunswick's biggest fear. Exactly. The first time Bishop Barr had it, they tried to pass on first down, and they had the uh, seven-yard loss putting him in passing position, but now with Redondo and Riley running on first and second down, two really nice runs. All right, twin receivers again to the right. This time it's Redondo, looks to get outside, turns the corner and slips down, and then a late hit, but no call. And there's the flag. Bishop R. Chris Riley came flying in like a locomotive and hit one of the North Brunswick players, and that indeed will be 15 against the Trojans. No, it was a personal foul on Bishop R. That's that's what I said. 15 against the Trojans, uh, against uh, against Chris Riley. Oh, I'm sorry. They'll move it back, and that hurts after a nice run, Jeff. You don't want to see those kind of penalties. You're moving the ball on the ground, and now you put yourself in a hole. Oh, you're right. Three nice rushes in a row. 
getting down to the 45-yard line after starting this drive with poor field position. And you're right, this penalty really hurt them. It's going to probably force Keegan to have to put the ball up in the air, something you don't want to have to do. You just saw, you just saw Tony Ashitino. He has been so successful here. 74, 52, and 2. His career record at Bishop Barr, just about every year, his team is in the playoffs. Eye formation, receivers, twin receivers, split to the left. Out of the eye, Keegan rolls out, now left side, on the run, lets it go, and has a receiver. Just short of midfield. Dan Astorita makes the catch, senior 5'8", 160 pounds, and a good throw by Keegan. Keegan's certainly not a drop back quarterback. He loves to roll either right or left. This time he rolled to the left. Astorita got wide open and made a nice catch. So going from about second and 25, now it's third down and about five, giving Bishop R the option to either put, keep it on the ground or put it up in the air. High formation. And I'm not sure if that was a straight quarterback sneak. I guess it was. Keegan goes straight up the middle. He's close to first down yardage, but I think he's going to be about a yard shy. A strange call, needing four or five yards going for the quarterback sneak. Now on the 48-yard line, Bishop Barr has a decision whether they want to punt the ball away or whether they want to go for it on fourth down. Big early decision for Tony Ashitino. Well, Brian Keegan, the quarterback, comes out, and that tells me that Bishop Barr will drop back into punt formation. Very interesting, Jason Rutin goes back. And a good kick here could pin the Raiders deep. Matt Hagee, the quarterback, is back. You don't see that too often. They were looking for a roughing call. They didn't get it, but a great punt as it rolls well inside the 10-yard line and down near the five. No penalty as the referee waved off the roughing the kicker call. In all honesty, Lou, the referee was right on that play. To me, it looked like the kicker was hit, but the referee was certainly a lot closer than we were. Now North Brunswick is way deep in their own territory. Ball at the six yard line, and the Raiders a long way to go. 42 yard punt with no return. That's a great punt on any level. Out of the eye, here's the pitch to Dakayai. He turns the corner and is forced out of bounds, just shy of the 10 yard line. Picks up a couple. Seven minutes, seven seconds remaining in the first quarter. No score between the Raiders and the Trojans. We're both expecting a low scoring game and every time we say that it backfires. <laughs> but right now they're playing for field position. That's why they punted on fourth down and one. Tony Ashitino got exactly what he wanted. Now what he wants out of his Trojan defense is to hold North Brunswick and get the ball back in their half of the field. Second down, the give again, Dakayai scrambles ahead for a couple. Tough yards down there. Might have picked up a yard. It's third down and about six. And let's see what the Raiders do deep in their own territory here. Right now, Joe Policastro Jr. has run two conservative plays because of their lack of field position. It'll be interesting to see third down and six, whether they put the ball up in the air or not. My feeling is, is if they don't, they probably will not get this first down. All right, man goes in motion, and speedster Kashim Grady is wide to the left, but they do run it, and it's the quarterback Hagee on the run, and he might be close to the first down. Hagee took it himself, and let's see. They might measure. Hagee dropped back the pass and then quickly decided to run the ball almost like a uh, delayed sneak up the middle, yeah. and it's gonna be close. Almost like the old quarterback draw play. You don't see that too often anymore, but don't know if that was designed by Hagee, if he had that intention all the way, or if he just saw the opening and took off. And it was great second effort, because it looked like he was definitely gonna be stopped short of that first down. Now we'll have to wait and see with this measurement if he actually did get the first down. First down, Raiders. Hey, that's a huge first down by the North Brunswick quarterback. 
Coach Paula Castro, very high on Matt Hagee. Calls him one of the most coachable kids you'll ever see. A lot of heart and a fine leader. And of course, that's very important at the position that he plays. Twin receivers out to the left. Now Grady goes in motion. Eye formation for the Raiders, and they give it to Dakayai, the tailback, but not much doing this time. Trojan defensive line gets penetration. First contact by number 44, Lang. And number 59. Lang, and also John Kuttner, the nose guard on the tackle. Mike Lang, the outside linebacker. So Dakayai, no gain. It is second down and 10. Doc I averaged over 15 yards a carry last week in their opening 28-8 victory against Cedar Ridge. 161 yards on 11 carries. So far, Bishop R has penned him in. And there's a penalty on that play, a motion penalty, which is going to be declined. Second down, 10. Peggy, again, Dakayai, not much yardage as the Trojans play it well defensively. Well, in our pregame, we mentioned, Lou, sorry, that Bishop R would be king on Dakayai. I mean, you really have to. You have to force somebody else on North Brunswick to hurt you. Right now, with two rushes, they have a negative two yards, and it's second. It's third down and 12. And look for Hagee to put the ball up in the air. We'll have to see if he has enough time to get off a good throw. Out of the eye, Hagee gives on the delay to Dakayai, and he's crushed. And he might have fumbled. Did the ball come loose? Still North Brunswick ball. And Riley and Rutten again on the tackle. So now the Raiders will have to punt it away. Well, certainly no surprise so far. We knew it would be a tough defensive struggle, and it's turned out to be that way. Mike Krupkin is back deep in punt formation. Has time. High kick. And it bounces straight up in the air. The Raiders down it at the 40-yard line. No score between Bishop R and North Brunswick. And the Trojans will have their third offensive possession of the game. And great field position. The Trojans kicked the ball off at the 48-yard line, and they got it back eight yards closer to their end zone at the 40. Bishop R wants to do something now that they have this good field position, try and put some points on the board. First down and 10, the Trojans in North Brunswick territory at the 40-yard line. And they give to Redondo, he's got an opening and into the North Brunswick secondary across the 30-yard line. So some huge holes opened up by that Bishop R offensive line. And Doug Redondo with his blazing speed went right through that line for about nine and a half yards. It's gonna bring up second down and short. This is our favorite play here. If you're Bishop <laughs> R, do you wanna throw it to the end zone knowing that you more than likely can get the first down on third down or do you run the conservative play and take the first down now? We'll have to wait and see what Tony Ashitino comes up with. Now let's see if the Trojans have up their sleeve. Come up in the eye with receiver split left and right. Now the rec one receiver goes in motion, Keegan. Flips it out to Redondo. He's got a first down and much more. Again, crashing into the North Brunswick secondary, close to the 20-yard line. The offensive line is making gaping holes right now. Bishop R is doing everything they want on the ground. So far, Bishop R, interesting as you watch them with their running plays, running away from the side that Charles Luisa, the Raider back, usually lines up. He usually lines up on the tight end and they're going away from that side. He's an all-conference pick last year in the GMC. And according to his coach, he plays it at one speed all the time, and that's full speed. So obviously very wise for the Trojans to run away from him. They go up the middle, though. Riley, the fullback, and Bishop R right now just running the ball at will. The fullback on the trap 
straight up the middle. And you're absolutely right, Lou. They don't even have to think about putting the ball up in the air. They're on first down, eight yards. That's what any coach would love, to get that much yardage on first down, giving you so many options on your second down play. The Bishop are cheerleaders. I'd say they're excited, wouldn't you? They'll be even more excited if Bishop Park can get the ball in the end zone. Second down and two. And the Trojans on their first legitimate drive of the game. Ball marked at the 14 yard line with a minute 45 left in the first quarter. The pitch outside, this time the Raiders get great penetration and defense the pitch well. They lose a yard on the play to the Trojans. Not only did North Brunswick do very well against that pitch, it almost looked like it was going to be an errant play. They were doing great going right up the middle with traps and off tackles. This time they took it to the right side, lost a yard, and maybe even two yards, and brings up third down and four. Middle linebacker Ray Hansen on the tackle for the Raiders on that last play. Now it's third down and a long four. And Keegan, back to throw, he's pressured heavily and had to throw it before he really wanted to. A little bit high and through the hands of the fullback, Chris Riley. But he had to get rid of it as the Raiders had great pressure put upon him. It's fourth down and about four yards to go, Lou. It would be a 32-yard field goal if they wanted to attempt one. Jonathan Rich was the man who put the pressure on Keegan, the defensive end, senior 6'2", 190. Now they'll try a field goal. It will be a, about a 32-yard attempt. John Paul S.M. Player is in to kick the, extra, to kick the field goal. His kick is high, but not straight enough, and it goes wide to the left. John Paul is senior, 5'8", 165 pounds. And of course, last year, the Trojans had one of the best field goal kickers in the state in Mike's, Mike Store. 55 seconds left, we'll keep it right here as North Brunswick comes on offense. They'll move the ball to the 20 yard line. So the Raiders dodge a little bit of a bullet there as Bishop R, Bishop R had themselves a very good drive. They did, they were going right up the middle and then on second down and two, they lost a couple yards on that pitch and they never recovered. Hagee gives to Dakayai, again, not much there as Ishmael tries to go up the middle. Very tough though to run up the middle on that defense. With Kuttner, the nose guard at 6'1", 205, Molinari, Six foot 215, Shields and Scala. Also, David Lala gets some time in there. He's a senior, 6'3, 250. So, even though North Brunswick has a pretty good sized offensive line, not going to get many yards on that Bishop R defense. And again, pretty much the same scenario. And that might have been the last play of the first quarter. Clock ticking down, 10 seconds. And that'll do it. So the first quarter has come to an end. Your score at Bishop R High School in Edison, North Brunswick nothing, Bishop R nothing. Back with second quarter action in just a moment. Nothing the score between North Brunswick and Bishop R. Our TKR Cable Channel 6 Sports Game of the Week in the white division of the GMC, a game that will go a long way in determining who might win this division. Neither team able to score in the first quarter. Bishop R had the better drives. They actually had two fairly good drives. And of course, the better field position. North Brunswick had field position to begin the game, but not able to take advantage of it. Now the Raiders have a third down at about six. Hagee, the quarterback, back to throw it incomplete. It went through the hands of Mike Miller, and it was almost intercepted as well. 
So now North Brunswick will have to punt deep in their own territory. And again, Jeff Bishop R figures to get great field position. Without a doubt, North Brunswick once again an extremely conservative offense deciding to finally put the ball up in the air on third down. Look for Bishop R to get the ball, if not in the uh, half of the field that North Brunswick is defending, but close to it. Go, go! The kick comes to Rooten. He's at the 45. Angles to the 50 and cuts it in. Nice run back. 45 spins to the 43 yard line, and Bishop R will have it very good field position to start this drive. For the third time, they'll start this drive in North Brunswick territory. They've started at the 48, the 40, and now at the 43. Makes it difficult for the North Brunswick defense to always be so close and have their backs to the wall. I think it's important for Bishop R to take advantage of this field position because you're certainly not going to have it for the whole game. And when you do have it, imperative that you take advantage of it. All right, Brian Keegan, the quarterback, brings the Trojans up. He's got receivers split out to the right side and split backs behind him. Here's the give to Redondo, bounces off a tackler and gets outside. Good job by Doug Redondo, who was initially hit behind the line of scrimmage and scrambled forward for positive yardage. Joe Haig at 6'2", 210, looked like he was going to bring him down. He shook away, though, Redondo with that elusive speed, and he's uh, fairly powerful considering his size. Another good play on first down. We've been saying it all night long, but look at that. Six yards on first down. Bishop R has consistently done that so far tonight. Yeah, Tony Ascettino will take that average on first down every time, huh? No question about it. It makes your play selection that much more difficult to defense. Second down and about five at the 37. This time the fullback Riley dragged down from behind by Charles Louisa at the 35. And 91. They'll actually mark it just outside the 35-yard line. So a uh, big play here, third down and about four. And they're probably in the area where if they fall, say, a yard short, that they would go for it on fourth down. So they could run the ball here, and even if they don't make it, they would have another opportunity. Redondo, he plows ahead and should have the first down. He's inside the 35, down to about the 32. They may measure. Actually, they won't even measure. It is a Bishop Bar first down. They mark it at the 31-yard line. Redondo with two touchdowns last week in the 28-6 victory against Monroe. A one-yard run and also a 16-yard run. Keegan, a mess up on the play. Obviously, he was supposed to hand it off, and hey, got to love that sideline audio, eh? And Ray <laughs> Hansen was right there at the linebacker position to take care of Keegan and bring him down. For the I'm first time in a long time, sorry, Lou, Bishop Art does not have a great first down play. I'm sure you heard Keegan's reaction also. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> As uh, the handoff was not uh, properly made. <laughs> Second down and 10. Trojans gain no yardage on the play. And again, receivers split out to the left side. Twin receivers. And Keegan rolls that way. He's on the corner. Can he get it away? No! A big defensive play by Ray Hansen, the middle linebacker, and he got to the corner so quickly, I thought Keegan was going to be able to get the ball away, and all of a sudden Hansen was shot out of a cannon. It's the second play in a row that Hansen did that. He tackled the, the quarterback on the first play, and then here we go with, with the rollout. With the uh, two receivers to that side, but Hansen preventing the quarterback, Keegan, from passing the ball. So a big defensive play, now a third down and about 17. Back at the 36-yard line. High formation for the Trojans. And receiver split left, right. Keegan straight back to throw this time. He throws in the corner, it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Jason Rutten. 
but a fine defensive play also by Marquise Henwood, the senior cornerback who got his hand in there and stripped it away. Throwing to the short side, Rooten almost came down with the ball. Now with fourth down, Bishop Barr is going to punt the ball and try and back North Brunswick real close to the end zone. Look for the old attempt for the coffin, coffin corner kick here as he's kicking from the 37-yard line. All right, Rooten stands at the 50-yard line. High kick, and it touched one of the Raiders, and then he had a jump on it inside the five-yard line. Almost disaster for North Brunswick. Looked like Mike Miller jumped on that ball. He was trying to get out of the way of it, but it hit his foot, making it a live, loose ball. A great play there by North Brunswick to cover up. Now the Raiders are pinned deep in their own territory again. The ball is on the three. First down and 10. Doesn't give very many options to Matt Hagee here, the North Brunswick quarterback. Look for the ball to stay on the ground, more than likely to go to Doc II. They go to the fullback, and he might have lost a yard. That's Rob Zoba. Senior 5'9", 185 pounds, nothing there. Jim Shields on the tackle, the defensive end. They lost a yard, second down and 11. Once again, Tony Ashatino's team king on the run. This time, as Lou mentioned, it wasn't Doc II, but it was Zoba. But the result was the same. Very little yardage, lousy field position here for North Brunswick. They have to get a couple first downs to try and get some better field position. Under seven minutes left in the first half, a very quick first half. And the Raiders trying to get out of a hole. Here's Dakayai. He's hit, brought down, nothing doing. Might have got back to the original line of scrimmage. Brought down by Mike Presley and also by Rich Davinsky. Now third down, and about 11. North Brunswick more likely will just keep the ball on the ground and they'll be content to punt the ball away. So we'll have to wait and see if Joe Policastro decides to allow his team to put the ball up in the air. Certainly, the Raiders would like to get a little bit of yardage to give their punter more room. Hagee bang down hard, Domofsky on the hit, and he just pummeled Hagee to the ground. But Matt did what he wanted to do there, he got some extra yardage across the five, picked up about four yards on the play, and that's four extra yards for Mike Krupkin to kick in the end zone. That helps. You're right, Krupkin's gonna stand in the end zone. Bishop Barr will have to wait and see if they attack the ball, and they're just content to let him kick it and go for the run back. A very good kick by Krupkin, it's fumbled, by Rooten, and then he's hit and brought down. That's an excellent kick by the punter, Mike Krupkin, out of his own end zone. He drove it back to the 45-yard line, and even though Bishop Barr starts in North Brunswick territory, it could have been a whole lot worse than that for the Raiders. You're right. This time, Bishop Barr starts on the 42-yard line, so in their five possessions, four of them have been within 50 yards of pay dirt. Five minutes and 18 seconds remaining. Here in the first half, there's no score between the Trojans and the Raiders. A tough, hard-hitting defensive struggle. High formation for Bishop Barr. Keegan calls the play. Up the middle, you heard that hit. That was a shot at the 40-yard line. Riley, the fullback, carried the football, and he was clocked. Picked up perhaps two. Blocked by Ray Hansen again. That kid's everywhere. No matter where they run the ball, whether they try and pass the ball, he's right in the middle of the action here for North Brunswick. Joe Policastro's team once again with their backs to the wall at the 40-yard line having to play defense. Second down now and eight. Trojans and receivers split out to the left side. Keegan hands it to Redondo, and he's hit after it looked like he had an initial hole. He burst through it, but brought down, and guess who? Ray Hansen on the tackle again. Now third down at about six. 
So the Raiders, if they can put the hammer down here on this play, might get the ball back. Bishop Barr with another opportunity in North Brunswick territory and Trojans really need to take advantage here. Keegan rolls out right side. He's on the corner, he'll keep it himself, and he's brought down, I believe, short of first down yardage. Mike Miller, the strong safety over there, and he twirled Keegan to the ground. He is short by about two yards, fourth down. Now an interesting decision. You're obviously too far for a field goal, so do you go or do you punt on fourth down and two? You're right, they're too far for a field goal at the 35. It would be a 52-yard field goal. Bishop Barr, they've had this great field position the whole game and haven't done anything with it. Well, they're gonna go for it here, fourth down and two. They have a full house backfield, almost a wishbone, and an unbalanced line. And they run away from the unbalance, an interesting call. Redondo nailed behind the line of scrimmage. They were unbalanced right, but ran left. Craig Wade with the good tackle, and you're right. It looked like they were gonna just power it, but they ran it to the outside, lost yardage, and gave up the great field position that they've had. I don't understand the play either, Lou. First, first down and 10 at the 34-yard line. I formation, the fullback, Zoba. Not much. They've been saying that all night long. North Brunswick, the offense has done absolutely nothing. The holes just aren't there. The great defense from Bishop R has shined so far. Zoba with a two yard gain. Todd Molinari, defensive tackle, six foot 215, a senior on the tackle. And it's second down and about nine. At some point, North Brunswick's gonna have to open it up. So far, they're 0 for 2 with the passes. Look for Hagee now with the good field position to probably try and put the ball up into the air. High formation and Hagee back to throw. Now he screens it out incomplete, trying to hit Dakayai. But thrown behind him. And third down and nine coming up. You're right, trying to get it to Doc I.I. and give him some running room. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him. The defense looked like they were right around Doc I.I. So even if he had garnered it in, it didn't look like there was much. One thing you can say about this first half, it has been extremely well played by both teams as far as execution is concerned. No, pen there was one penalty that I can remember. That was a personal foul, but that's about it. Only one penalty in this first half. Trip receivers this time to the right. Hagee sets up. Now he runs out of there. He's got lots of room. He's going for the first down, and he's got it as he runs out of bounds. Good play by the North Brunswick quarterback. He saw lots of real estate on the left side and took advantage of it. Peggy had his receivers up the middle and to the right. He did that all on his own with no blocking whatsoever. So now with a minute 57 remaining in this first half, North Brunswick has the ball on the 46-yard line, the best field position that they've had. There's the North Brunswick quarterback, senior six foot, 185 pounds, and obviously not superstitious as he wears number 13. Again, trip receivers on the right side. Peggy looks that way, he's gonna run it again, and he picks up another five yards or so as he runs out of bounds and stops the clock. Once again, he runs away from his receivers, and also his blockers, and he does it all on his own. Didn't get quite as much this time, though, as he did the last time. They only give him about two yards, so second down and eight at the 47. Actually, mark it at the 48. That time, Hagee, it looked like, wanted to run the ball the whole time. He has not had much time when he's dropped back to pass the ball. Bishop Harris put great rushes on him. And trips to the right. Hagee. Somewhat trouble, he's in big trouble, gets away, still gets away, and finds a receiver, and he's crushed the receiver. Just destroyed. What a hit by Presley. Miller made the catch, but that's a great play by Hagee. Hagee looked like he was gonna be caught for a long loss there. Finally found Miller as Hagee ran the ball and rolled to the right, 
and he almost got the first down and then got clocked. Here we're going to see it again. Hagee goes straight back, and then he starts rolling to the right. It looks like he's going to be penned in. Looks like he's going to be brought down here. Throws a bullet there to Miller, and then watch this hit. Third down and one. Third and one, Hagee on the quarterback sneak. He is close. I think he's got the first down. Clock will stop momentarily as they will set the chains. Boy, that's a great job of improvising by Hagee. What a hit, though, by <laughs> Presley. No doubt about that. North Brunswick with only a minute 11. They have to be careful, Lou. And they call a time. An official's timeout is called right now. Yeah, they're going to measure here, I think, for the first down. They'll bring the chains out. Yeah, I think he has it by about a half a football. And the Raiders try to drive here, which will result in some points. And it is a first down, as Jeff Kurtzman said, by half a football. And as I also said, a minute 11 is not a lot of time and they're gonna call a timeout right now, North Brunswick is. They wanna discuss how to get this ball into the end zone with only a minute 11 remaining. And we'll take a break as well. One minute, 11 seconds remaining, second quarter. No score between North Brunswick and Bishop Barr. Fact, every year leaf burning sends tons of pollutants up into the air and is not allowed in many localities. Fact, through composting, these same leaves will enrich our soil. You know, Mom, composting is really easy. Sure, it's like recycling your leaves. And it keeps pollution out of our air. That's a fact. For more information, contact your local cooperative extension office. Ah, uh, yes, the moon over Edison. Here at Bishop R, North Brunswick and Bishop R on a moonlit night, an excellent football game. First down and 10 for the Raiders at the 44 yard line of the Trojans, a minute 11 remaining second period. Hagee on the corner, keeps it himself, wrapped up and not much yardage there. Trojans play it very well on defense. Mike Lang up to make the hit. Got some help from Mike Presley as well. And North Brunswick lines up quickly on a second down and nine. Hagee back to throw. Now he's in trouble, but he shovels ahead to Takayai, and Ishmael slips down at the 35-yard line. He had some running room. And now a timeout will be taken by North Brunswick. So the Raiders call time. We'll keep it here with 38 seconds remaining. If you're thinking field goal, well, they do have some confidence in their field goal kicker. Pat Guadagnino, a senior 5'9", 170 pounds. Coach Pollock Castro feels that inside the 35-yard line, he's about 70% accurate. So that's not bad. They're not there yet. But another 10 yards or so, they might try a field goal. That was the first time all game that Doc I.I. had any running room at all with that shovel pass. The defense for Bishop Barr was surprised. The only thing that stopped Doc I.I. was himself. He slipped on that wet turf and brought himself down. So now we have third down and two. One timeout remaining for North Brunswick. Only 38 seconds remaining in this half. So North Brunswick cannot waste any time. They have to try and get this ball upfield quickly, whether it be take it all the way for the touchdown or, as Lou mentioned, get in position to go for that field goal and try and put some points on before halftime. Third down and two. Ball marked at the 37-yard line. Doc AI goes in motion. Hagee back to throw. He fires. I think it's incomplete, and it is. Ball was low, and Matt just didn't get it out there to Ishmael. Now fourth down. Now if you're North Brunswick, you've got to get the first down, otherwise there's no chance to do anything. So they've got to get the first down here. 33 seconds. Hagee will run it, and he's got the first down. A big pile up down near the 30-yard line. Now keep in mind the clock will stop momentarily as they set the chains. 30 seconds remaining in the half. 
And once they're set, the clock will start right away, but they take their last time out. All right, Raiders take another time out, and there is a time out on the field. 30 seconds remaining. We'll take time out as well. No score between Bishop Bar and North Brunswick. You would consider dance with me, would you? I'd consider it. Then I'd say no. I'm not much of a dancer, but no. You know, I wouldn't blame you if you said no. Would you like to no. dance with If at first you don't succeed, you're pretty normal. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There's your story as you take a look at the scoreboard. 30 seconds remaining. No score here in the first half between the Raiders and the Trojans. North Brunswick comes up on a first down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Hagee back to throw. He launches it long as a receiver incomplete. Just past the outstretched hands of Charles Golden, a junior running back. He was open. Ball just a little bit overthrown at the five yard line. Well thrown pass by Hagee. Just a little bit overthrown. Golden was open. They'll try it again. 26 seconds remaining. Second down and 10. Twin receivers split out left and right. And Hagee back to throw again as time launches for the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Kashim Grady. Sophomore wide receiver, now it's third down and 10. Well, both times, receivers have been open. 20 seconds to go. And Hagen just barely overthrew them both times. You're right, North Brunswick getting their receivers open, getting great cracks at putting the ball in the end zone, or at least getting right near the end zone. So now there's only 20 seconds remaining, third down and 10. Again, same setup. Twin receiver split left and right. Hagee rolls out now. He's being chased. He's on the corner, and he throws. End zone! It's up in the air, up for grabs, and incomplete. Off the shoulder pads of Golden. Pretty good coverage that time, though, by Aaron DeShiel, number six, junior cornerback. There was good coverage, Lou, but as we're going to see, Matt Hagee rolls out to the right and he finds Golden open momentarily in the end zone. It hits him in the shoulder pad. He had a good chance right there if he hadn't allowed the ball to hit his shoulder pad and it guided it in with his hands. It could have been six points for North Brunswick. Last chance now, 12 seconds left. It's fourth down and 10. Hagee throws for the end zone. It's inter almost intercepted. Better off not, Luke, yeah. that's their ball anyway. Good defensive play that time by Chris Riley in good position. So the Trojans defensively hold. They'll get the ball with about five seconds left, and I wouldn't suspect that they'll do anything radical here. Probably go into the locker room satisfied with the tie for now. Bishop R with most of the opportunities with the field position didn't take advantage of it. North Brunswick didn't move the ball at all until this last drive had three or four chances to get the ball into the end zone. They all fell out of the receiver's hands though. And Keegan does indeed go down on one knee. So that'll do it. First half of football is over on a crisp October evening. Big game in the white division of the Greater Middlesex Conference. It's been a defensive struggle. Your score at the half, North Brunswick nothing, Bishop R nothing. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll take a look at the Bishop R marching band. So stay with us. Imagine you have more than a thousand kids. If your teacher see you... That's a lot of responsibility. 25 over 2. And imagine you could shape the future of those kids. You'd set the highest standards. Hey, we've got it! You'd inspire them to achieve. To pursue their individual excellence. After... 
provide some entertainment here at halftime as well. So we'll take a look at the Bishop R cheerleaders and then the Bishop R marching band. Nicely done. And Bishop R. Band is lining up now, getting ready to take the field. We're at halftime of the game between the Trojans of Bishop R. and the Raiders of North Brunswick. No score at the half. Pretty big game for both teams here in early October. And we saw the North Brunswick marching band performed prior to the game. And now the Trojan Band takes the field here to entertain at halftime. I was in desperation at the end of that half. Hagee showed to me he has a good arm, and I think they have to use his ability to run the ball and to pass the ball, because Doc II, if they're gonna have him running the ball all the time, he's gonna be keyed on like he was in the first half, and it's gonna be extremely difficult for the North Brunswick offense to work. All right, as Jeff mentioned, since the Raiders deferred in the first half, they will receive here to begin the second half. Bishop R will kick left to right on your screen. And the Raiders will send some of their speedsters deep. Looks like Ishmael Dakayai, number 22. And number, let's see if we can get that number. I think it's Charles Golden, Lou, 33. And it is Golden, 33. And it's Golden at the five. He's to the 10, to the 20, breaks through a hole, gets away and spins momentarily across the 25 to the 28 yard line. So pretty good return by Golden and the Raiders will have it. First down and 10 at that point.
Matt Hagee brings the Raiders up in the I formation. He says twin receivers split out to the right. Now the man in motion is Seelheimer. Hagee gives to Dakayai up the middle and bang down hard. Mike Lang on the tackle. Also got some help from the interior of the Trojan defense. Only a pickup of a yard, second down and nine. And again, very much like the first half, Jeff, there just isn't much room running wise up the middle against that Bishop R defense. None, Doc, I only had one chance to do any type of running in the first half. That was on a little shovel pass from Hagee. And the only thing that stopped him was he fell down in the middle of the field in the mud. They have to do something to get him the ball. They have to try and put the ball in the air so that way Doc I.I. will not be keyed on as much as he is. Hagee back to throw. He lets it fly and incomplete. And again, had a receiver out there just a little overthrown. Intended for Tim Darty. Senior, six foot, 170 pounds. He's more of their possession type receiver, but that time ran the long route. Yeah, we're gonna see this once again. We're gonna see Hagee drop back and he's gonna have Darty do the uh, fly pattern to the right. And there you see the straight fly pattern just slightly over to Darty. I think they have to go for some shorter passes to the middle of the field, try and pick up five or six yards instead of just going for the long pass like that. Peggy keeps it himself. Now he's in trouble. Gets away momentarily. Got a great block. Spins again and is, takes a real big shot. Mike Lang comes up and pummels him. And North Brunswick will have to punt. He originally got a great block in the backfield from Shane Carpentieri, number 76. You're right, and Hagee here with the fake handoff, rolls out to the left, looks to pass, finds nobody open, decides to run. And you're gonna see Mike Lang, number 44, right there, knock it right through the screen. Unbelievable hit there by Lang. That one hurt. Here is Krupkin. Pretty good kick, high angling kick. Ball is fumbled, it's loose, there's a scramble. Let's see who's got it. Ball is still loose, and the Raiders recover. So the first real turnover of the game and a big opportunity now for North Brunswick inside the 45. Normally on the high school level, you don't see many punts return because they let the ball go. This time on the short punt, Bishop Barr, they tried to make the reception and they fumbled it. Then uh, about six or seven guys from both of the teams went diving after the ball. Joe Policastro's North Brunswick team with the big break here as they're gonna start this drive on the 44-yard line of Bishop R. North Brunswick's had lousy field position all night long. Let's see what they can do now with the good field position. High formation for the Raiders. And he pitches. This time it's a reverse. And Golden runs it inside the 40-yard line down to the 38. Very nice play by the Raiders. And they get good yardage. Great play. It looked like it was going to be a straight handoff to Doc II but it wasn't a good positive yards, about five or six yards, and that's what you want to see. Bishop Barr in the first half, they were getting seven or eight yards on first down. Well, this time, it's Turner Brown fair play. North Brunswick with five yards on first down, bringing up second and five. High formation again. Charles Golden has been a significant player for North Brunswick in this game. Second down and five. Hagee straight back to throw. He fires long, it is intercepted. And on the run back, Mike Presley. And the Trojans get it back. So the Raiders, after the turnover, give it right back. And here we're gonna see the play again. A poorly thrown pass here by Hagee, overthrown. You'll see the interception by Presley. And then at the end, watch this tackle there by Jeremy, Jeremy Seelheimer. Right here, number 12, oh. Seelheimer. Oh. Seelheimer, last week Seelheimer had what they call the tomahawk hit of the week. He might win it again this week with that hit. For North Brunswick, you're right. He might get it two consecutive weeks. Oh. Man, Riley brought down. Are we seeing some hitting in this game? These two teams really leveling each other. 
See, a lot of people will say this is a boring game because there's no scoring. I think just the opposite. The defense that's being played out there tonight on both sides is sensational. You can hear the popping from up here. And as it gets colder and colder, these hits are going to hurt the players that receive them more and more. 7.50 remaining, third quarter. No score between Bishop Barr and North Brunswick. It's a second down and about seven for the Trojans. The shield goes in motion out of the eye. They give it to Redondo, who falls down, and then Louisa covers up. Charles Louisa probably would have had Redondo anyway. Third David. down and about nine. Sorry, David Jeff. David Lala for Bishop Barr. It looks like he turned his ankle, and he's hobbled off the field, and he'll have to get some medical attention. Hope he'll be all right. Big offensive tackle, 6'3", 250. Now third down and nine for the Trojans. Oh, Keegan buried inside the 25-yard line. A penalty flag on the play. Let's see what that's all about. Keegan went back, and he just, he looked up, and it was all over. Keegan had absolutely no chance whatsoever. He fakes the handoff, he turns around, and he sees four players coming after him. The penalty is on Bishop R. It is blocking below the waist. And I think the Raiders probably will just refuse the penalty, take the football, because it would, will be fourth down and about nine for Bishop R. is declined, so the Trojans will punt. And again, the Raiders figure to get good field position here. Last year, these two teams played to a 10-10 tie. Are we looking at a tie for two years in a row? And Bruton is back, gets a high snap. He gets it away, it's a rocket kick. Oh, what a kick. It bounces at the 35 to the 30 and rolls inside the 25. That is a big time punt. Jason Bruton. About a 46 yard punt, no return. You can't ask for anything better than that. And so much for that great field position for North Brunswick. Now the Raiders get the football at the 25-yard line. No score with 6.15 remaining in the third quarter. Sealheimer is wide to the left. High formation for the Raiders. And Hagee back to throw. Now he's in trouble, trying to run out of there. And he spins right into the middle of the Bishop R defense. And on the tackle, Todd Molinari, John Kuttner. Hagee had no opportunity at that time to pass the ball. Great pass rush put on him. He was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Kashim Grady is now wide to the left. Out of the eye, Daka Yai looks to get outside. This time he's got a little bit of running room and dives forward for positive yardage. He'll be short of the first down, but picked up about eight yards on the play. This is one of the few times that Daka Yai has had any open running space. A straight handoff, he takes it to the right side sweeps it, dives for a couple extra yards, and as Lou mentioned, they're two yards short of getting the first down and keeping this drive going. Dakai finally got to show some of that speed on that run. Feels beaten up pretty badly in the middle with all the rain that we've had recently. 
and the Raiders are right at that part of the field. They go for the first down, and they're close. Hagee on the quarterback sneak. They might measure. We'll have to wait and see. And it is a Raider first down, so North Brunswick moves the chains at the 35-yard line. 4.26 remaining in the third quarter. Well, you get the feeling more and more as this game progresses that one score is probably going to win it. And taking it to another degree, one turnover might be the cause of that one score because neither offense has been all that potent today. It's been a defensive struggle. Now penalty markers and whistles. This is probably against the Raiders. And it is a legal procedure against North Brunswick. That'll back them up five. That is the first penalty of that type that we have seen in the game. That's pretty good on the high school level to go this far into the third quarter. We've only seen maybe three penalties all game long, and that's because of the excellent coaching. Joe Policastro here at North Brunswick, Tony Ascettino at Bishop Bar. These teams are extremely well-schooled. First down. And 15, at the 30, Hagee keeps it, pitches outside, Dakayai doesn't have a chance. Hit on the play, Paul Scala, the defensive end, senior 6'2", 205, and he smelled that one all the way. Hagee with the pitch to Dakayai, and you could see the turf just being taken up. The field is getting worse and worse as it's getting cold out there, and there's no way to run the ball effectively right now up the middle. Second down and about. Second down and about, let's see, 21. And the Bishop Bar crowd calling for defense. Hagee back to throw. He's looking to set up a screen, and he's brought down. Jim Shields on the sack. Junior 6'2", 225, offensive end. Shields broke through. Hagee had no chance whatsoever. When you have a second down and 21, everybody at the game is expecting a pass. And Bishop Barr, they just broke through, tackled Hagee for a loss, and now it's going to be third down and over 30 yards to go for a first down. They have to get to the 46-yard line for a first down Do the Raiders. Now Hagee's going to run. No way. He's brought down again. So a big defensive stand for the Trojans. Again, it was Shields who came up big on the play. Now the Raiders will have to punt from deep in their own territory. It's up to Mike Krupkin now to get that kickoff to try and prevent Bishop R from having good field position. Bishop R has two players at midfield hoping to field this punt and get the good field position and try and get the first score in this game. Dan Astorita, number one, is back there. Low snap. High kick. Astorita will field. No, he lets it go. Let's it go, and it bounces at the 46. So Bishop R will have good field position in North Brunswick territory at the 46-yard line. A minute 30 remaining third quarter, no score. 45-yard line. Here come the Trojans now. On offense, out of the eye formation. And receiver split left and right. Keegan calls the signals. He pitches to Redondo. Now, actually, yes, it is Redondo. And Doug Redondo gets positive yardage inside the 45, down to the 41. You're right, temperature is dropping. Got to guess it's perhaps in the upper 40s, maybe, at this point. Second down five. But again, not bad weather tonight at all for this game. 
second down and call it six at the 41. Split backs behind Keegan. It gives Redondo, slam, tried to go up the middle, nothing to it. Raiders played it very well. And again, Ray Hansen in on the tackle. Joe Haig helped out. Frank McKinney not getting very many chances to run the ball. It's been all Redondo, and they're king on Redondo right now, just like Doc I is keyed on when North Brunswick has it. Redondo is expected to run the ball. He got maybe a half a yard that time. Brings up about third down and five. And they won't get another playoff here in this third quarter. So we have played three quarters complete. The score, North Brunswick nothing, Bishop R nothing. No score as we enter the fourth and final quarter. Bishop R with a third down and five in North Brunswick territory at the 40 yard line. I formation for the Trojans. Brian Keegan is the quarterback, senior 5'9", 170 pounds. He's back to throw. He fires long, incomplete. Intended on the far sideline, the coverage offered by Marquise Henwood. And it looked like it was intended for Jason Rutten, the wide receiver. So fourth down, and the Trojans will have to punt. Again, the Raiders figure to get pretty rotten field position out of this. Well, I think that's the point. That's why they're punting the ball. They're at the 40-yard line, but fourth down and five, they decide let's try and pin North Brunswick back, hold them on downs, and then get that good field position once again. Good snap. Bruton's kick. It's a high spiraling kick that bounces out of bounds inside the 20. Right about the 15 yard line. So the Raiders will get the ball there. So actually, they're going to say it went out at around the 20. I think it did. It was about a 20 yard punt. They didn't get exactly what they wanted. But now Tony Ashatino wants his defense to keep North Brunswick from getting a first down and get that ball once again in decent field position. North Brunswick has had poor field position for most of this game. Matt Hagee comes at it. Quarterback, senior six foot. And the pitch is to Golden. He's got good yardage. Breaks into the Bishop R secondary. Cut from behind by the defensive tackle, Todd Molinari. That's pretty good quickness for a defensive tackle. I'll tell you, Luke, Golden had a couple passes thrown to him at the end of the first half, and he's been a real offensive force here as he gets the handoff, takes it to the left side, and gets a first down on that play. In the first half, Rob Zoba at fullback was getting a lot of rushes along with Doc II, but right now, Golden is the most important person in this offense. He's been getting the most yardage so far in this half. He's in there now. Daka Yai actually splits out as a wide receiver to the left. Hagee back to throw and has his receiver, Sealheimer. So Jeremy Sealheimer makes the catch. He's also the backup quarterback and doubles as a receiver. You saw him on defense. He's a hard hitter on defense as well. That's a nice play by the Raiders. Six yard gain now, second down and four at the 41. Referee calls time. I'm not sure why. Do we have an injured player on the sideline? That's on the near sideline, hard for us to see. I don't think so. The referees are just... Well, actually we do. There's a player for Bishop R down on the sideline. And of course, we cannot see who that is. It's been a hard hitting game, Jeff. And uh, these guys are gonna be bumped and bruised all over after this one. No doubt about that, a defensive struggle for the amount of hard hits that we've had. We've had very few injuries, very few penalties, and a 
extremely well played game. If you want to look ahead on the schedule, North Brunswick next week will play J.P. Stevens. Some key games down the road for the Raiders. You look uh, at the 29th of October, Colonia, and uh, they'll also play at East Brunswick this year, North Brunswick. That's one of the, the two crossover games are J.P. Stevens and East Brunswick. Now, Bishop R, their two crossover games are Piscataway and Edison. So not to take anything away from East Brunswick and J.P. Stevens, but you'd have to say that Bishop R has the tougher of the crossover games, wouldn't you, on paper anyway? Oh, there's no doubt about that. Edison was a crossover game last year and a loss for Bishop R. Edison with that big game tonight against Woodbridge and Piscataway, they've started out 2-0. All right, here we go, second down. Aaron DeShiel, uh, Bishop R was the injured player, and he's being attended to on the sideline. We hope he's all right. Hagee gives up the middle. It is Golden who hits the hole hard and has good yardage on North Brunswick first down at the at the uh, Raider 46-yard line. Once again, instead of going to Doc II, they're going to Golden, and Golden is getting the positive yards. Good drive here. Starting out at the 20-yard line, they've moved the ball up, had a couple first downs, and they're up to the 42-yard line. 47-yard line, actually. Peggy, quick hitter, hits Seelheimer. He's slammed down and fights for extra yardage into Bishop R territory across the 50-yard line and down to about the 47. So that play has been successful here in the fourth quarter, and that play is there. Second time, Seelheimer's gotten a five or six yard reception. We were talking about this before. Just go for those quick five or six yard passes that'll open up your running attack, and it'll move the ball up the field. It's a nice little drive here for the Raiders. They are mixing their plays up very well, and that's something that Coach Paula Castro wanted to do to be successful in this game, and they're now doing it here in the fourth quarter. And that'll be a five yard penalty against North Brunswick. The tackle jumped off. That'll hurt, that'll bring them back five. Take away that five yard game that they had on the pass to Seelheimer. So instead of being second down and five and giving you a lot of options, it makes it second down and 10 and it'll cut down your options ever so slightly. Ball at the 47 and the clock will begin to tick. We're at 10.05 remaining in the game. No score. Nothing, nothing. Bishop R, North Brunswick. Peggy looking to throw. Now he fires in. It's incomplete. Intended for Dakayai. And Ishmael was open, but the ball slightly overthrown and through the hands of Ish. So third down and nine. You're right. Dakai was open to what was a tough ball to catch. As the weather gets colder and colder, it makes it even more difficult. We're at an even 10 minutes left in the game. It's a big play for North Brunswick. They've had a fairly successful drive here. And if they want it to continue, they'll have to pick up 10 yards. I formation and twin receivers are split out to the left. No flag as Hagee kind of pulled out of there at the quarterback position. Fumble on the sack. It's picked up by the Trojans. This could be a touch. Paul Scala, touchdown, Bishop R. We talked about this before, Lou. It might take a turnover to get a score. Paul Scala picking up the fumble recovery. There's a penalty after the play. Too much celebration, but the touchdown will count. Paul Scala picked up the fumble recovery, took it the distance, and Bishop R scores the first points of this game. It Thanks for that game. 
to watch this, Lou. It looks like Hagee starts pulling away, and they wanted to call a penalty right there. They didn't call it, though, and then they snapped it to Hagee. He looked back to pass, and then he got tackled. A great tackle there by Todd Molinari. Molinari made the hit, and Scala picked it up and rambled in. It is 6-0 Bishop R, and the Trojans will attempt the extra point. It's amazing how a game can turn on one play like that. North Brunswick, a couple first downs, they're moving the ball. And then what we talked about before, might take a turnover to get some points on the board tonight. Molinari with the hit, Scala with the pick up and the run. Now this is a big extra point. Could be the difference of the ball game if North Brunswick should come back and score. The snap is good, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Break in the action, 9.49 remaining fourth quarter. Bishop Bar seven, North Brunswick nothing. Here at Channel 6 Sports, we, we have a unique opportunity to be able to capture that special moment for our local high school athletes. Uh, I would hope that uh, maybe 10 or 20 years down the road, they'd be able to take a look back at, at the uh, Channel 6 Sports production and relive that thrill again. Remember, your, your local high school athletes are maybe your next door neighbor or your son or daughter. And uh, I, I, I would think that uh, we're a very special part of their lives and being able to bring that joy uh, to them. We're back, and Bishop R getting a big opportunity as they sacked Matt Hagee, recovered the fumble, and run it in for the touchdown. Notice, though, Lou, there was a celebration penalty, so instead of kicking the ball off at the 40, Bishop R is forced to kick the ball off at the 25-yard line. This could give good field position to North Brunswick as they try and come back from that 7-0 deficit. All right, Rutten will kick it off, and back deep is Golden and Ishmael. It's a short kick taken by an up man, that's Marquise Henwood, and he's drilled down at midfield, but the Raiders have good field position. And that was caused by that 15-yard penalty. Now, the, the big question here is the mental toughness of the North Brunswick team. Did that take the wind out of their sails? This will be a big test for them. The only time will tell my guess is they're gonna have a good opportunity now. They were moving the ball with a couple first downs. They have the good field position. I think North Brunswick will make a valiant effort try and move the ball down and try and put some points on the board. Of course, Bishop Barr is going to play that good defense. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Hagee throws over the middle, incomplete. He was going for the quick toss to the tight end, Jonathan Rich. Rich, good size, good hands, according to the North Brunswick coaching staff. But now a second down and 10. Well, the Raiders had success running the ball with Golden. And they were able to uncork a couple of short passes in that last drive. Hagee being chased out of the pocket, lets it go, it's intercepted. Picked off by the strong safety, Brett Lewinsky. And the Trojans are back in business in North Brunswick territory. Peggy took a deeper drop than he normally does. And as you're going to see here, you're going to see this deep drop by Matt Hagee. Goes about 10 yards, 12 yards back, rolls out to the right, and throws the ball right to Lewinsky, who garners it in, gets a couple positive yards after picking it off, and brings it down to the 42-yard line of North Brunswick. Right now, if you're Bishop Barr, you just want to use the clock, Lou. You have that 7-0 lead, nine minutes remaining in the game. Nine minutes remaining, and Bishop Barr, a big offensive possession here. They can not only take time off the clock, but if they can score, they can put this one away. 
I formation. And Keegan gives to the first man through the fullback, Chris Riley. Inside the 40 and down to the 36. It was a nothing, nothing game, a defensive struggle until the big play when the hit forced the fumble and it was picked up by Scala who ran it in for the touchdown for Bishop R. Your North Brunswick, you have to toughen up here, Lou. You can't allow Bishop R to go down and score. That would seal their fate. Second down, five. Redondo bounces outside. Another good move. Two great moves on the play. First the bounce out, and then the nice juke move at the 31. And we'll see this play again. Redondo, as he makes the juke, as he runs the ball to the left side, gets good positive yards, and he's brought down by Matt Hagee, who also is the quarterback for North Brunswick. First down and 10 at the 30. Eight minutes left in the game. Seven nothing, Bishop on. Here's a big run, and going for the corner is Sanford Boatman. Touchdown, Bishop R. <laughs> Boatman's first carry of the game, and he takes it 30 yards for the touch. Which is surprising, because Boatman usually plays a lot more. Last week he had a 16-yard run for a touchdown. This week he hasn't played very much, but he made a great run there, a 30-yard touchdown run, and a game that was scoreless just two minutes ago has been broken open. It's 13-0 as Bishop R tries to get their 14th point. SM player is in to kick the extra point. And the snap is good. The kick is low, though, and no good but a break in the action. 7.39 left in the game. Bishop R 13 and North Brunswick nothing. The many faces of TKR Cable would like to have some words with you. Karen White takes it all the way. You see Keegan gets the ball, just hands it right to Boatman. Boatman takes it to the right side, uses his speed, and he's gone. Beats the uh, last man, Jeremy Seelheimer, for the touchdown. All right, low line drive kick. It's picked up by Dakayai, and he tries to get to the outside, but is brought down at about the 30. So the Raiders will have the football, seven minutes and 32 seconds. They've got time, but they need to put a quick offensive drive together and get some points. And you have a charged up defense out there. It's going to be very difficult for North Brunswick to come back. North Brunswick has not shown the propensity for the big play tonight. They can get the uh, two, three, four, five yard play. Whether they can bring it down the field twice in seven and a half minutes is yet to be seen. Twin receivers split out to the right. And also a receiver wide left. Hagee with one setback behind him. Now he steps back, wide open. Seelheimer makes the catch and breaks it to the secondary. Jeremy Seelheimer with a big play across the 40 and down across the 35. He was wide open on the left side. There's a, I thought there was a flag on the play, but there is not. So much for only bringing it four or five yards. Seelheimer a couple times has gotten a five or six yard gain on that play. Well, this time he was wide open and it took Doug Redondo and Mike Lang tackling him after about a 30 yard game to bring him down. So the ball is at the 37 yard line of Bishop R. And that play didn't take a whole lot off the clock. 7.06 left and the Raiders are driving. Now an eye formation behind Hagee. Here's the pitch to Dakayai and Ishmael running with reckless abandon down near the 30 yard line. That might be his hardest run of the night. Seven yard gain. Dakayai getting time and getting his speed up that time. 
North Brunswick bringing the ball up the field quickly on this drive. And you sense a little desperation in the North Brunswick offense here, don't you, Jeff? Yeah, you do. But they've had two good plays in the road, the road the long pass to Seelheimer, and now this play by Daka High, as you see, takes it up the gut. Good speed right there for seven yards and brings up second down and three, giving a lot of options to the North Brunswick offense. And of course, my point is that it's good the desperation. They're playing with a little bit of reckless abandon. Hagee, though, is in deep, deep, deep trouble here. He fires incomplete, just threw it out of bounds, and a wise move. Had he been tackled, he would have lost about 20 yards on the play. Now a third down and four, very important play for the Raiders, although at this point in the game, they would go for it on fourth, obviously. No question about it, Paul Scala, who picked up the ball and ran it for the touchdown, was the one who was chasing Hagee on that play, forcing him to just throw it away, start all over again, it's third down and three. 6.15 left in the game, it's 13-0 Bishop R. And the Raiders trying to crawl back into the game. Hagee sprints out, now goes back against the grain. It's nearly intercepted. Tried to get it out there to Dakayai. In and out of hands of the tailback and almost picked off by John Kutner, the tackle. And now there is desperation on the part of North Brunswick. There's only six minutes and 10 seconds remaining and it's fourth down and three. Imperative for the Raiders to pick up this first down. This is a big play for them. If they don't get it, you can almost, you can almost write this one in because Bishop Barr will try to run out the clock. Hagee looking, and it's batted away at the line of scrimmage. Let's see who got that one. Looked like number 74. Could have been Rutten 25 or also number 74. That's a sophomore, Francis Corchado. A sophomore, 6'4", 225. And it was Corchado who locked it away. And, Hag and Hagee took that short drop, tried to hit Seelheimer on the left side. The ball was knocked down. They went to Seelheimer one time too many. And now Bishop Barr will look to keep it on the ground and eat up the clock. Twin receivers split out to the left side. And Keegan hands it off. Here's Boatman. And he's caught from behind, brought down by Hagee. And Sanford was on his way again. So a good tackle by Matt Hagee. He's explosive, Sanford Boatman. Yeah, Boatman not seeing much action tonight. Had the 30-yard run to put Bishop Barr up 13-0. And now when they get the ball back again, he had a nice rush here for five yards. Tony Ascettino just wants to keep the ball on the ground, keep from getting a turnover, and try and run that clock out. High formation, 5-25 and counting. Second down and five. This is the gift to the fullback and gang tackle is Chris Riley. Didn't pick up much, might have lost a yard. But most importantly, he, kept, he stayed in bounds to keep the clock running, and that's all they really want right now. Third down in about six at the 35-yard line. For North Brunswick to have any chance whatsoever, imperative on this third down play, they stop the Trojans. The boatman hit behind the line of scrimmage and brought down. Looked like Mike Krupkin, number 41, on the tackle. Fourth down, and the Trojans will punt. Raiders will get the ball back. And it would be an understatement to say they need a big play. They're going to have about four minutes left once they get the ball. They're going to have more than half the field to try and get a score, and then they'll have to do it a second time. You're right, it looks dismal right now for North Brunswick. What they really need here, to be honest, is either a block or 
a run back for a touchdown. It's going to be tough to get the block, and that's probably a delay of game, which is no big deal right now. Bishop Barr using all the time up, running the clock down to 3 minutes and 56 seconds. That moves the Trojans back five, stops the clock with 3.56 remaining. But what I was going to say, Lou, right now the ball's at the middle of the field. It's going to be difficult to get off a good pass rush up the middle. So the best chance is if Doc I.I. somehow can break it. It's a low snap, and the Raiders were coming. It bounces out of bounds at midfield. So North Brunswick put the pressure on. They went for the block, but Rutten got it away. Now the Raiders again will have the ball, but just 3.49 remaining, and they're going to have to put it up. Two receivers that Matt Hagee has gone to most tonight are Charles Golden and also Jeremy Seelheimer. Bishop R knows that, so they're certainly going to be watching them closely. Trip receivers to the right. And Hagee running out of there now. He's in trouble. He's on the corner, lets it fly, and incomplete. And it was an attempt to get it to Seelheimer. Absolutely no chance, though, for Hagee. Anybody who's ever tried to throw the football while they're running at full speed to the right, trying to elude two tacklers, knows how difficult that is to try and complete a pass. Second down and 10 coming up. Stops the clock with 3.41 left. Bishop Barr is just going to tee off, try and give Hagee as little time as possible to try and complete a pass. Hagee in trouble, dumps it, tried the shovel pass. And he was really shellacked back there. Chris Curtis and Francis Corchado combining on the hit. They made Matt shovel it off before he wanted to. I don't care if you're Joe Montana or Dan Marino. If you get no time at all like Matt Hagee is getting right now, there's no way to complete that pass. Third down and 10. 13 to nothing, Bishop Barr. In the lead, Trojans trying to go 3-0 on the year. And Seelheimer makes the catch and dives forward close to the first down, an excellent individual effort. Did you notice the uh, one stop, the one step drop, just a short, get rid of it quick by Hagee, and he found his old reliable receiver, Seelheimer, and as Lou mentioned, he dove toward the first down, but it looks like he's gonna be less than a yard short. So it is fourth down, and the Raiders with three minutes left in the game have to pick up this first down. And they can run the ball. They only need the one yard. The clock would stop until the chains were set on the first down. So that might be the play, maybe a quarterback sneak. And Hagee does go forward. And it depends where they mark it. Clock will stop as the officials, I'm sure, will call for a measurement with 2.40 left. Nope, they say first down. Don't need to measure. It's across the 40 to the 39. Now the clock will start ticking once the chains are set, so the Raiders have to get up to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Now the clock ticks. I don't know what they're doing. See, now I, don't, I don't understand. You know, maybe I'm off base here. I don't understand. The referee 
makes the clock tick and sends the team back to the huddle when they're already up on the line of scrimmage. They should be able to stay up on the line of scrimmage if they're there. You agree? I agree. It makes no sense whatsoever. Why do they have to go back in the huddle? I don't know. That's not fair to the Raiders. There's the throw. It is incomplete. Not only is it unfair, it cost them 15 seconds. I don't get that. Now, again, I might be off base. Unless there's some kind of rule I don't know about, but they can't force you to huddle. It just doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't. I mean, it, it, you can stop the clock. I mean, you can legal procedure against North Brunswick that'll send the Raiders back five. 214 remaining. Jeff, I gather you were trying to get if, an interpretation on that, but there's no reason that they went back other than that they wanted to. They just they didn't have to go back and huddle. Well, maybe, maybe the referee didn't send them back. Maybe they did go back on their own. It just we're talking about 15, 16, seven-year-old kids. If you're up there, stay up there. Yeah. Here's Hagee looking to throw. Incomplete. There's just no chance. I mean, Matt is just, I mean, he's just getting crushed. The Trojans are coming in with guns blazing. Now it's third down and 10 with 2.10 remaining. Tony Ashtino knows exactly what he's doing. He's making sure the North Brunswick's quarterback, Matt Hagee, has no time. You blitz him to death, don't give him any time, and the chances of him completing a pass are minute. Hagee, the one time he did complete it, he found Seelheimer real quick. He took a one-step drop. That's what he has to do. See this long drop? He's not going to find anybody, more than likely. He lets it fly, and he does find Seelheimer, and he's down to the 25. He's got a first down. Seelheimer runs great routes. He gets open more times than not with the first down. The clock stops as they move the chains. North Brunswick has to get their play called, get up to the line, and get going. And we're going to see this over again. Hagee, I didn't think he should drop as far as he did and roll out to the right, but he did, and it worked as he finds Seelheimer open for the first down. Seelheimer, a great possession receiver, got the most out of that. They set it, and the clock starts, and we'll see if North Brunswick can get anything going. And Hagee throws and hits Seelheimer at the 20, and he dives ahead to the 15-yard line. They should call timeout, and they do, Lou. They have three timeouts. They have to use them. So North Brunswick calls their first timeout to discuss what they want to do with Joe Policastro Jr., their first-year head coach. What they have to do is get the ball into the end zone as quickly as they possibly can and then go with the onside kick. First things first, though, they have to get it into the end zone. It seems like they're going to go to Seelheimer almost every play. Seelheimer should probably run a route right by the sideline. That way he could catch the ball, go out of bounds, and stop the clock. Because if he keeps catching the ball in the field of possession, in the field, they're going to have to use their time ups quick, timeouts quickly. All right, the ball is at the 18-yard line. 1.39 left. It's been a good ball game. Despite the 13 to nothing score, it was scoreless for a very long time. And then the fumble recovery by Paul Scala and the touchdown run following the recovery, 7 nothing, and then Boatman with a 30-yard run. I made it 13 to nothing. A hard-hitting defensive struggle. And North Brunswick trying to get on the board and creep back into the game. Hagee looking for the end zone. He fires. It is incomplete. Intended in the corner of the end zone for Golden. But good coverage by the Trojans. This almost looks like a repeat of what happened at the end of the first half. Almost the exact same scenario, the clock running down. North Brunswick trying to hit Golden in the end zone. At that time, they had four cracks and they were unsuccessful. We'll have to see right now what happens. Hagee once again will line up and try and get the ball in the end zone via the pass. Third down and three. 
Here is Hagee looking to throw. Now he throws, it is intercepted. And a great interception by Mike Lang. He reached out with one hand and pulled it in. That'll do it. Now the Trojans will just run out the clock with a minute 24 remaining. North Brunswick does have two timeouts if they decide to use them. We'll have to wait and see if they do, but either way, Bishop Barr with a 13-0 lead, a minute 24 remaining in this football game. They're gonna go 3-0. and A great start in the white division and a big victory for Tony Ascettino. Big win for Bishop Barr. Next week, they'll have one of those crossover games, and next week, Piscataway, a tough cookie in them, their own right. Piscataway off to the good start. So the Trojans will have another tough ball game next week. And they just hand it off up the middle. To tell you how tough those games are, Lou, since 1991, teams in the white division are 631 and one when they play outside of their league. The red division is where the power is right now in this conference. Forty seconds left, and the Trojans will run it out here. Nice win for Tony Ashitino, his club again in a rebuilding mode, if you will. Will go three and zero, and for North Brunswick, you know they're going to drop to one and one, but they played a pretty good ball game, especially defensively, Jeff. And uh, you got to feel that uh, Joe Policastro Jr. has got a pretty good ball club this year. I think they're gonna have a very successful season. I would agree with that. As you mentioned, they were playing J.P. Stevens next week. J.P. Stevens struggled in their first game against Sayreville. I think North Brunswick can give them a battle. North Brunswick played very well today. A couple turnovers in the fourth quarter cost them the victory. Bishop